We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for tuning in to our broadcast here at A Place Called There, a full gospel holiness church. This is Katrina A. Braun, the wife of evangelist Alan A. Braun, and it is my pleasure to give you a personal invitation to visit us on the web at www.aptfullgospel.org. Sit down and write us a letter at A Place Called There, P.O. Box 1569, Cleburne, Texas, 76033. And we would also like for you to visit us on our YouTube channel, Pastor Alan Abron. Now, let us hear a word from Evangelist Alan Abron. We thank God for this opportunity to come to you, come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, giving me another opportunity to give a word on his behalf and allow him to use me. And I'm so happy that we have this opportunity. I have this opportunity. And I hope that many of you that are under the sound of my voice that you can take this message and, and just give it to a friend. And if you're right now listening to me on the radio, why don't you just call a friend and let them know that I'm on the ad so they can hear this message. It won't be long, but what I give you today, I believe and I, I have hope that it could take you to that place, that place in Jesus Christ. And so what we want to talk about or what I desire to talk about today is the lie between us and that lie between most of us uh, is Satan. Satan is a liar. And he has created a, a lie or told a lie, a bunch of lies, Think, letting people know or making people uh, to assume or to think or however you want to put it, that they can walk with him and still have fellowship with Christ. It won't work. You can't walk hand in hand with the devil and think you're going to have fellowship with Jesus Christ. The Bible said light and darkness has no fellowship. And as I was talking to you or gave the revelation in part two and in part three, there are three calls. That is the call to repentance, the call to duty and the call to service. See, people have to understand what is duty. Duty is a place where you learn to serve. Just like when you go into the military, they they ask you, uh, what are the duty stations that you would like to go to? They give you a little what they call a wish list. You don't probably won't get it, but they just say this is probably where you want to go. And so the first thing is just like repenting. When you go into the military, you first got to get sworn in. You got to take an ass valve and, and you got to go to boot camp to see if you're worthy. God calls them. God calls us. He calls us out of many. And then he gets us ready and takes us to a duty station. And that's where we practice and get ready to serve him. And what we have today, people are trying to go serve. They just take a bucket of paint, paint something, and then say, I'm serving the Lord. People, you ought to see women and men today. Men are dressing like pimps and women are dressing like prostitutes and calling themselves prophetess or working for the Lord and whatever, whatever. And then say, well, you know, you shouldn't look at my body. That's your problem. You need to have self-control. You know, this old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. It is. That's true. And what we fail to realize today is that it, it may be true that looks may not be everything, but looks tells a, a lot of stories. You can look at a man and a woman. If the man and a woman is married, you can't just say they different. They married. See, a hoe and a man can't come together. If you land with a hoe, you are a hoe. No man can't say he's not a hoe and say, oh, my wife is a hoe. You a hoe, too, because you married her. So you can't lay with a woman and start pointing at the woman you married. The, mo the woman you pick, you are what you pick, just like you are what you eat. And so what we have to understand is the biggest lie we're being told in our community this day is that we're pointing at one person, whether that's a male or a female. And we're pointing at one group and, it, and it, you can't do that. It's just like being in the Navy. If the ship go down, everybody going down. You can't just say it's the captain alone for he may be held more responsible. But it's everybody's failure to do their job as a collective unit. And what we fail to do today is that people want to be married and want to come into families, but they don't want to be a unit, a complete unit that works together. And when it fails, they have to share and take full responsibility as a unit. 
When a marriage fails, it's not the man, it's not the woman, it is the man and the woman. It is the unit because the Bible said you came together as one flesh. So it is the fault of the flesh. And when you walk in the flesh, then you're going to obey the lusts of the flesh. Let's build a foundation here. Won't take long from the book of John. Let's read John 8 and 44. That's John 8 and 44. This is not, again, this is not all revelation. This is simply a footnote, something to, to cause you to think, something to cause you to read more in the scripture, in the word. Here, 8 and 44 say, ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abide not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. I mean, he birthed it. And so many times people today are saying they with Christ. But in reality, you are your father, the devil. It doesn't matter if you're in church. All of us at some point in time have obeyed the lust of the flesh. Whether you, I don't care how holy you think you are. All of us, me, you, all of us have walked in the flesh. We have all obeyed the devil and, and his works. And we have to repent. We have to take that first call and that's to repent. But we have a lot of people that walk in denial. They, they are walking in self-righteousness. They think that they don't have to repent. It, wouldn't it be so great if many people that are professing to be pastors and teachers, even mothers and fathers, would, make, would show one example, one basic example to their children and to their followers is the, the way to repent. I'm not saying the way to just keep doing things. But wouldn't it be great if a pastor could get up before the church and admit when he has sinned? Admit that you did wrong. Admit when you have wronged somebody. But what we're trying to do is trying to promote something that's not true, an image that we are perfect. The Bible tells us to be perfect. Let me explain perfection. Perfection is that you will and I will never be perfect. Only God is perfect. But let me tell you something. Can you and I run 75 miles an hour? No, we can't. But we can get in a car, crank it up and let the car do the driving. And the car is doing 75 miles an hour. And because we are in the car, we also are doing 75 miles an hour because we're allowing the car to do the driving. The right. Yeah, we're guiding, but the car reaches 75. We could never do that. And so when we obey Proverbs 3 and 5 and all that way, acknowledge God and acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. That means that when we are in Christ and allow Christ to make decisions for us, not us, but him, then we are perfect because we are riding with him as he's making all the perfect decisions. Instead of making decisions for ourselves, allowing God to make that decision. You know, God will let you know to look in the mirror. You know, you got a lot of rump back there. You don't have to say, well, I can't help because I got all this. Well, if you let God lead, God say, cover that up. Put a girl on, put a slip. Go to a, go to a seamstress to fix that what men won't lust. See, that's God allowing you to be perfect. Same thing with a man. Button your shirt up. You, nobody needs to see your nappy hairs. You know, uh, you walking around doing other things as a man, whatever God leads you to, what you have read, obey God, not yourself. Because when you obey yourself, your flesh, you are obeying the devil. And the lie between us today is that people think that I can do what I want to do because I've been free to be myself. That's that lie that Potter telling you again. The lie the potter's telling you that I'm the potter's come to my house and I'm going to recreate you. No, God can only create and make. And it is God that wounds and kill and he makes alive. There is a hell and there is a heaven. And people think today that I've, I've heard people say there is no hell. But I want you to know one thing is that we know for a fact that we didn't create this, create this earth. And I would hate to get there and realize there is a hell. So I'm going to live my life as if it is, as it is, as if it is, rather. But you that out there living your life that there is no hell, what happens when you get there and it is? Can you get back? I don't know anybody that can create a human. I don't know nobody that can create a Earth or Venus or Mars. I don't know anybody can do that. Any of those planets. I don't know anyone that could create planets. And since I don't know anyone like that, then that means that there is a higher power that has the power to kill, to destroy and to make alive. 
And so the lie we're hearing today, today is that we can walk in our own flesh and do what we want to do. And you can't. The lie that's being told today is that we can just blame someone else for our own shortcomings instead of coming together as a collective and realize that as a collective, we have failed. And so as a, a collective, we have to find a way to repent and to succeed and to repair. And so I close this message letting you know that the lie being told today is that we can look every place else but where we need to. And that's first in our family, our marriage, our community, our churches. That's where we need to look. I hope you have enjoyed today's message here at a place called there, a full gospel holiness church. This is Evangelist Alan A. Brun, and I would like to invite you to become a follower of Jesus Christ. It's very simple. If you would like to become a follower of Jesus Christ, all you have to do is repeat after me. I confess that I am a sinner. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you to come into my life and to receive me as a son or as a daughter. I repent that I am a sinner and I would like to turn from my ways. And Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, you can take hope in the fact that you are now a follower of Jesus Christ. In my mirror I see What I am now And not what I used to be Oh thank you Jesus I got a new attitude Nothing seen quite the same I believe I run on in Jesus name this is the day that the Lord has made for me Testify today. This is the day that you made And I thank you for it, Lord I thank you for your love and grace I thank you for your tender mercy